Well, I'd like to say joining me outside the House of Parliament is the Conservative MP for Litchfield, someone who voted for the Prime Minister, who confidence in Boris Johnson yesterday. That is Michael Fabrigan. Michael, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, were you surprised by the scale of the rebellion? I was surprised it wasn't worse. Really? If I'm honest with you. Well, if that had been any worse, he would, have, he would have been gone today. Oh, no, there's a sufficient margin that it wasn't that bad. But, oh, you know, I sure. said on uh, Patrick Christie's show yesterday that I thought about two-thirds would vote for him. But deep, secretly, deep down, you know, I thought, no, it's going to be a lot closer. And it wasn't as close as I feared. So there's a sufficient margin there. Do and you think his authority's been damaged, though? Oh, without any question, if any Prime Minister has a vote of no confidence against them, it is going to damage, you know, some of their... Uh... Their ability to govern. Well, I wouldn't say ability to govern, but it certainly does damage them ever so slightly. But we've got to move on, as everybody says. Now, it's easy to say. Prime Minister was saying it, others were saying it, Philip Davis on uh, GB News was saying it earlier today. But what is the important thing is for the government to actually now come up with proposals and ideas and momentum because with the momentum you then move everything on. And what, what are they? Do you agree with Lord Frost for example the national insurance rise should be scrapped? Well there are lots of things that could be done it could be that there are other things you can do in compensation whether we should be doing quite the zero green effort that we're trying to do at the moment you know it was almost our misfortune I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me but it was almost our misfortune that we ended up chairing uh, the COP meetings in Glasgow. I almost wonder whether, you know, we should be saying to ourselves, come on, we've just come out of a COVID crisis. It's damaged the world economy. The war in Ukraine is damaging the economy of the world still further and having a real impact here on the United Kingdom as it is in other European countries. Perhaps it's a time to look again at some of the policies that we have adopted at a time when the economy was not being battered by these world events. Now, in many ways, Tom was just suggesting that, that actually, in some ways, Bodygate was the catalyst, if you like, um, for the vote. But actually, in the end, it was much more about policies and issues. But is it, though, isn't it for lots of Conservative MPs, it's actually about Boris Johnson's personality? They don't trust them anymore. No, I don't they think do. it's that. Well, but there are I... lots of MPs who do think he has misled Parliament. Lots of Conservative MPs. No, I think they're saying that. I think they're talking about Partygate. But I think Tom Harwood is actually spot on, he usually is. Uh, I think a lot of it had to do with those people who didn't support Brexit and are now trying to get some sort of reversal. Tobias Elwood keeps on going on about uh, our joining the single market, which would put us under the auspices of the European Court of Justice and would mean that we'd have to obey rules from Brussels again, so I wouldn't call that a Brexit. Then you've got others who are saying, well, actually, we don't agree with Channel 4 sell-off, we don't agree with the Rwanda policy to stop and deter people from crossing the channel illegally. A lot of it has to do with policy. And you know, the Conservative Party is a broad church, and I respect the views of most of my colleagues. Some of them, however, you know, some of them were ministers and then find they're no longer ministers, so are resentful. Others were never even ministers and have been overlooked. So they're resentful. I'm not sure I respect them but, quite but so much. But isn't it extraordinary, though, that, you know, there's 130, 140 or something on the payroll. I mean, the majority of backbenchers, the majority of your colleagues on those backbenchers almost certainly voted to get rid of him. Well, I mean, you don't know that some of the ministers didn't vote to get rid of him. We don't know. It was like, a secret ballot. Isn't, isn't Lord Haig right, though, when he says that Boris Johnson may well be at the steering wheel, but the car's now got two flat towers and he's just not going to make it uh, to the end? That in the end, he's now so politically wounded that he's not going to last the course. You know what? I love you William. His, I love William Haig, but there's nothing worse than ex-prime ministers who turn their hand to journalism. He was never no, he wasn't. You're right. Yeah. So even more resentful, <laughs> maybe. Good point, Darren. So either because he wasn't prime minister or because he's just trying to make a good story in journalism. You know, there's nothing more irritating than people who haven't quite made it telling people who have made it and our successes how to run a government. It's like former chief whips who tell the current chief whip, I would have done your job better. And there are plenty of them around. <laughs> Michael Fabrican, <laughs> as always, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Then be there, because I never before, Lydia. Thank you, Michael.